Kabila na Sashaba na Biba Shika 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 Distinguished comrades, ladies and gentlemen in terms of uh, the practical reality with regards to production and uh, movement of goods within the region as well. I thought if a guy, you know, I like to discuss in a level that we workers can understand ourselves. Before I begin to contemplate going to university, I think as a parent I need to ask, how far has my child gone in the primary school? Did he do well to marry secondary school? Uh, depending on how he, whether he made his wife or not, then I will consider whether he should go to university. And looking at him, what, what is his area of, of uh, where does he have, seem to have a better attitude in the terms of career progression in the future? I would like to ask, before we begin to talk about free trade within Africa, how successful was our Equals Agreement. Because Equals, I understand, it was meant to promote free trade, movement of goods and, and persons within West Africa. And what have we seen? Because some man eloquently showed us how under the guise of Equals, many Equals countries who simply don't have production base simply became by government official policies, particularly in the smaller countries around us, became a dumping ground for prohibited goods. They legalized their import into their country, but Nigeria is the destination. And you now have to resort to methods which in a democracy are arguable, namely having to invoke the power of the state to decree that we close our borders. Why did we close the borders? Because our neighboring countries were not observing the rules of equals. So, if we could not effectively get our neighboring West African countries to observe the rules of the game, is that the basis to proceed to expand further, bringing all other African countries? Precisely because even the smaller ones do it. I have learned from my video training never to be idealistic. Of course, I'm driven by idealism. That is what puts me into the world of work in the first place. I mean, a union work. Or, sorry, not to be driven by ideal policies, but to deal with practically realizable and achievable policies on the basis of my own peculiar experience, not on the basis of the experiences of other people. It is how I define my situation that informs my policy choices. Not copying euro. And if you want to copy euro, you must be a thought. And so, why is UK withdrawing from Europe? Which means the European Union is not as perfect as it appears to the external observer. If it's beneficial to UK, will they pull out? Why are they pulling out? So, why are you talking of common currency for the continent? How has the common currency work for European when you look at some of the crises they've had in Greece and several other, Africa, uh, several other European countries? So me, I don't do things because others are doing it. I have to do something because it suits me. This is the time to borrow the only one word one man use so where I don't want to mention his name so that the disease doesn't affect us. This is the time for Nigeria first. Because the logic of a continental trade, as one of the things has mentioned, was to have access from Nigeria point of view, instead of being limited. To a market of 200 million, you will now have access to a market of 1.2 billion. Theoretically, this is fine. If you were confronted with a situation in which you have so much to sell, but you have limited outlet to sell it, so you are now going to a trade agreement so that you can have access to other markets. But I ask us, even as you try hard, and it's a good effort, Mr. President. The way I made in Nigeria, because it will be very difficult for you 
uh, are textile workers who are committed to protect textile jobs to go and import it as we used to do as we used to do before. But look beyond your clothes and look at your socks. Are they also made in Nigeria? I can see Isa Arebu here. I'm looking at his shoes and I'm looking at my own shoes. They do not look like product of Leonard. They don't look like product of Leonard. No, I say, I say your shoes are my shoes. I'm not explaining them to you. They are neither made in Nigeria. I know, I'm not even sure they are made in Africa. But I use this app because we have so many things in common. We use Monish and we have both work in the textile union. So he will not pick a phrase. In any case, we can afford the mutual office to fight. <laughs> but every other person, there and here, we are all wearing smuggle shoes. I suspect that the custom officer's uniform is not Nigerian. <laughs> To state information, God knows, as the governor of Edo State, I had the privilege to sit in a meeting of National Economic Council and National Council of State. And I said to our late president, Umaru Musa Yarano, I said, government has turned Nigeria to a free, to duty-free country. Duty-free, he said that. At the very best, we have the political will to prohibit a number of items including furniture, including certain categories of fabric, leather, and several other things. And yet, every Nigerian knows how much you pay to get, um, what do you call it, a container of any of the prohibited items. So the result is that because they are prohibited, Nigeria collects no duties. So that's why I call them duty-free. And because of the excess of penetration of these uh, uh, prohibited items, it means that effectively Nigeria is basically a duty free country. Here yeah, we are not an international airport. But even when you buy duty free items in an international airport, in countries where laws are strictly enforced, when you get to your country, other than the duty allowance which Nigeria Customs will advertise on arrival, every other thing you bought are duty free, you want to pay duty on it once. You exceed the, the maximum allowance, which is no more than $500, I, I suspect. So, everybody is smuggling. Police are smuggling uniforms. Nigeria is smuggling uniforms. Nigeria Air Force is smuggling uniforms. Who is not a smuggler? I told the president again that looking at all of all the governors, including the president himself, we were all wearing prohibited fabrics. <laughs> and sitting on prohibited furniture. There is room for special, I mean for frank engagement between victims of incoherent policies and those who churn out those incoherent policies. There is need to find courage to engage those responsible for policy which they are refused to enforce and those who are victims of lack of enforcement or policies that appear to be good on paper. So, my point of departure is why expand beyond equity? where we could do even manage aircraft. And as we speak, middle of last year, we saw Nigerians before South Africa. So Africans are to allow Africans to set up legitimate businesses in African countries. I have been reading over the past two weeks suggestions that we should evacuate Nigerians from Ghana. So the Ghanaians are not tolerating Nigerians not managing smuggle goods, but just to participate in the economy in spite of the provisions of effort. I'm asking myself, my own ignorance and very limited knowledge of international trade. But if really this is who we are, what is the theoretical foundation and what is the experience that form the policy that we should expand for them? So I, I want our experts to take care, to take note of this. The advantage I have is that if I am wrong, I am not an expert. I don't have to be right. But if I manage to be right, then uh, just if you know, I saw a video. What is their production?
shop with at Eugenia Masu refer to that. Africa countries that can be said to have a production base. If you are not, if you don't have a manufacturing base, what is it that you seek to move freely within the continent? So people are going to be signatories, and if you if you if you, if you look at those who are who were in a hurry to sign, they are precisely those who have no manufacturing base and no goods to sell within the continent. And I suspect that they do so because they are going to set up free ports and Europe and America, Asia, every other part of the world we, we use their ports, they will put their country labels if they want to even disguise it and, Af and Nigeria will be the destination. I think that we need to be more sensitive at this time. And I'm happy with what the Director of NNC said about employment and so on. First is that I want to shift, shift emphasis away from this, what has for me become very boring statistics about the population of our youth in relation to those of our UK. Thank God that I'm a youthful man, that's why I try to do as far as I can. And the face can't be simple because the fact that my head is totally mad. This is why I used to go to school when I was uh, uh, in my early thirties and late thirties. Are we actually asking the question? The world we are in now is it a world in which it's about the quantity that divine the energy? No. In my humble opinion, no. It is the quality of the skills of our youth. So when you refer to qualitative, you just speak to the quantity, and you are silent about the quality. I'm afraid in a world that is knowledge driven, we do need to ask far more fundamental questions. So, and what is the problem? Employers, I'm sure the engineer Masu will tell you, because you see, we can find the courts without facing the rule. Let's avoid dealing with consequences and avoid the primary causes. I'm sure that for the Dakota group, it will be cheaper to employ Nigeria engineers, electrical, electronic, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they're even more reliable because they don't have to claim they are going on holidays and they get caught up with a coronavirus doctor. And I know that by reason of my personal relationship, you had issues with people who travel out because of the lockdown and they couldn't come back and production is waiting because the countries are close borders. So it is not cheaper for the employer. Now, what is the link between this and the fact that our own colleagues spent one day teaching and three days on strike under the umbrella of ASU? Even at the time, you are talking of coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. Coronavirus has also created its own industry. It created industry for researchers in universities. It created small scale industries for the manufacture of. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not about to throw it away, it's just my disorder. It has created its own industries. But even our own, if we were to decide, giving a uh, huge employment challenges to say that our own uh, mask must be Nigeria made mask. That will create the so medium or micro or whatever name defined. So I think that we need to really ask more practical questions and examine ourselves. I was a governor and I'm happy that I became one so that nobody can say I don't know what I'm talking about. From what I know now, if I know it then when I was in NFC, I will fight people harder than I did. Because policies are rolled out without proper consulting those who will be affected. And you know how I got to know uh, Chief, well, I had the guy with the who was during the economic study group. I just find that ministers who are political appointees, not based on their background, not based on their line of training, they turn out and pontificate on policies on behalf of the private sector. And if a private sector operative asks radical questions, then you are targeted. So I was in this group, and I was asking the questions that the big business people could not ask. 
And Ali could then ask me, then I didn't know who he was. He said, But you want your money? I said, You seem to know our problem as much as we do, or even know him more than us. But you people are always fighting us. I said, Yes. I don't like business people. But I just find that I need them for my own enlightened self interest. Because when public policies or incoherent policies or lack of political will to enforce policies lead to factory closures, the first casualty are workers. And the fewer workers I have, the less my strength. The strength of a trade union is a function of the capacity and the viability of the employer that the trade union has. So when it comes to how to help businesses to grow, to create jobs, viable jobs, profitable jobs, we are building our strength to be able to confront. What does it mean if I train an employer who is trying to decide whether to close or not? I just, I just give him automation. So thank God, I will have another day to close my gate. So that all the other provisions in labor law with regards to redundancy payments and so on, I will be free. And you pretend that you went on the legal strike. Because who has sometimes somebody has been just record. So I, I think that this issues my advice, Mr. President. And I'm very happy that the NNC Deputy President is here and the General Secretary is here. I think we need to organize a platform to engage with ministers, to engage not ministers of state only, ministers themselves, to engage the economic team, including the one appointed by the President, include, uh, engage those managing our next Zim bank, all of these institutional protocols so that we can at least talk to each other and understand where people are coming from. So that we don't want to commit ourselves to agreements that we will be prepared for, more, for us. Those of us in the tech side, we knew. And that's the way you plan for the guy who asked for free money. I am like, you have not properly understood where we are coming from. The tech side industry did not collapse because of shortage of working capital. And I'm happy that we have uh, the junior master who, as I know now, had a terrible business that was dead to manage in a regime, uh, a policy regime under which you can smuggle in the very item he was trying to produce at Canada Texas. So, going forward, I read an article somebody wrote to me. This doesn't like me to measure his name, I'm not going to measure it. My factory is African. You know, we are not about to reinvent the wheel. We don't need uh, neither uh, AFC, EDA, etc. We didn't have those where we had Kaduna Textiles Limited, where you were managing director, employing 4,000 Nigerian workers, running 24 hour shift. We didn't need this facility where we had North Spring Nigeria Limited, the British company. We didn't have it before we had Northern Nigeria Texas, just close to KTF. We didn't have it before we had Nortex. We didn't have this to have Fintex. We didn't have this to have RNY Texas, without which I will not be here. And this is the product of our fourth generation political leader, like Sarah Bell, who rightly felt that it is a shame that we grow so much cotton in the north. But we are not adding value, we are exporting the country to Europe. So to create jobs, we need to set up textile factories. That is the history of Canada Textiles before that people follow. So what has happened that many years later, when our politicians have PhDs, they have MSCs, they have all the seeds and so on, we, we are beginning to ask. There is nothing that we said here that translates beyond common sense. Absolutely nothing. I don't want to refer to all those who are cooking. I have learned no new ideas. What is missing, which must exist, is the political will to get this through. And if it does, we are finished. And I'm happy I knew I mean the Suleiman is here. I knew him through fighting an employer in Cardo. He was fighting the union for not prolonging the strike, and I was trying to tell him we have to know where to stop it. Otherwise, we will be buying more than we can chew. So now you are in the parliament. Me, I have aspired as government, but I am not inspired as a I think that we need to engage people as well.
What are we teaching? Masu will tell you that a Nigeria graduate in chemical engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, is not able to, is not readily employable because of the quality. Your of own life to GTV Africa. Where the man's best six years try to obtain a BSc because as soon as one event is going on in life, this is GTV no Africa 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 services. To grab his system for six months. So even we labor need to need to need to do service allocation. Let me conclude by this uh, comment. I so I, I think that organized labor, because the issues are the same. What affect the textile industry affect the leather union affect the chemical union. NSC, can you remember when you had Machelin? When I did a house, Chiba vehicles on the road? Do we remember that we had Dunlop when I did a house, fewer trucks on the road? Where is Machelin now? Where is Dunlop now? We are driving more vehicles. Where are the tires? Coming from whether two places or with you. Yeah. My final submission is that you must do what I would call this is the new vocabulary and power artist, no catch. Because, sir, if I'm wrong, Educate me, that's why I like to ask this question. I was trained as a union man never to be intimidated by professors. Because when I share my ignorance, they will be provoked to lecture me properly. <laughs> <laughs> what, how do we get the textile industry back? So that we can have those 30,000 workers in Kaduna, those 30,000 workers in Kano, in Apapa, in Oshodi, in Isolo, in Portaikot, in Aba, in Onisha, all of these people were producing cotton. Whether giving it brocade, non it producing socks, universe are producing towel, Gida Borogo producing a blanket. We can go on and on. I have clear memory. And I saw a bright future for a country that is moving away from exporting to try to produce. We must return there. Why did the industry collapse? Two things. The first is Nigeria going to submit to World Trade Organization free market. And I know it was one and the other Abacha who signed that thing. And if you ask your president, this is the area customs coming and public policy. We prohibited the potential of safety fabrics. The coastal people blocked the border. You had about 2,000 trucks of smuggled material that were to come into the country. And I remember in one main day in Lagos, I told President Obasanjo, the day after he, he granted waiver, very dangerous war, waiver. Waiver means making laws and exempting some people from obeying those laws. So, which means selective criminality that is legitimate. Uh, legitimate. <laughs> and Baba granted the waiver. Those trucks came in, they went to Kaswakore Kano, and they were enough to feed the Nigerian market for almost a year or a year and a half. That is how uh, Texas Mill kept their clothes down. And the Texas employers clearly had no, no choice but to begin to look at alternatives. And eventually they realized it was better to relocate back to China and other places, produce, ship them to Kotonu, and the other headquarters, bring them to the Nigeria market. There are some radical questions we need to have to ask. And this is not provoking you against anybody. Me, like Kamal said, the workers are going to lose for their chain. Having been a governor, having been president of NNC, I have a little more than a chain to lose. So I am not deciding anybody. I can't be free if Nigeria collapses. But we must revisit these issues. 
we must get power back. Without power, you cannot do nothing. Uh, what you call AFCTA. You cannot do it. You cannot run an economy on generator. It's not possible. Even the statistics are here. I question their intelligence of the country. And so we can go on and on and on and on. Um, let me just appreciate you, Corporate President, and Corporate President of NSC, you are here, and General Secretary. You need to engage on this. Because as you can see, your minimum wage is only on paper. The combined forces of devaluation arising from foreign exchange crisis because the contradiction between our monetary policies and our fiscal policies, the incoherence is enough to create the crisis that we have now. That you want to save money, you save at 1%. 1%. You want to borrow, you borrow at 60, 40%. How? So you discourage people from saving and you pride money out of their reach. I don't know which model that is coming from. So you need a holistic interrogation of our industrial policy. And then say, how will we fare if this one takes off by January? I suspect it will not. We will have to find political reasons, including the all foresee COVID, as a basis to have some more time so that we can do uh, inward uh, searching and put, do first in first before exposing ourselves to a situation that will be very, very costly to new jobs and even to existing jobs. But thank you for this privilege. I, I'm a retiree, I'm not supposed to talk anymore. Thank you very much. The online to GTV Africa from Abuja, you are in a struggle, in a struggle for Nigeria. Again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, admitted lady TV. Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me, and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all.